Welcome back, fellow readers and collectors. Uh, let me start off by saying that this is going to be one of the better hauls just overall and in general. So buckle up and let's check out what we've got here. And appropriately, being the Halloween season of October, we got a couple of horror compilations. This not being a story compilation, but a compilation of writers who are writing about Stephen King. Fear itself. I think I've had this in hardcover, have not seen a paperback yet, and now I have one. And it's in pretty nice shape overall, but basically it's a whole bunch of different people writing about Stephen King, as you can see. With a foreword by Peter Straub, who co-wrote two books with Stephen King, who also recently passed away, unfortunately though he was fairly old, so that is a reality of life that can't be too surprised when somebody's in their 70s or 80s and passes on, I guess. But yeah, Stephen King is getting up there, so I hope we could really appreciate what he has done for the genre and for writing itself and to peak the he piqued the interest of a lot of people to start reading in general myself included i got back into reading like in my uh, mid late 20s thanks to stephen king and some of his books you know i see stuff like comic books to be a gate good gateway for kids to get into reading I think Stephen King is a good gateway to get a lot of adults or young adults into reading as well. So no matter what you think of him, he's done a lot of good for the world of reading and readers and collectors as well because he's got a ton of stuff, very prolific writer to say the least. And speaking of Stephen King, we got a compilation of 24 Tales Dark Forces. We've come across this before. I do have another copy of this that's listed and up for sale with another book or two. This is really cool cover art. A little bit glossy and shiny. Let's check out the table of contents though real quickly here. Because we've got The Mist, which is really cool for this to be in there. It's one I've already read. But it's still an awesome title to have in this collection, this anthology here, because it's 130 pages pretty much, so to have that included in there is awesome. There's only, I think, I think there's, it's one of his uh, books that includes The Mist, which I actually just read this last year, so fairly recently, and as you can see, there's a lot of other really great authors in here. We got Matheson, Writing with a, another Matheson, another Richard Matheson, must be his son, who, uh, speaking of which, Stephen King is also done with his son, Owen King. They wrote Sleeping Beauties together, like a, about 10 years ago or so, maybe. Uh, Robert Block is in here, Lisa Tuttle, we got Simak, Ray Bradbury. Let's see, go back to the first area. Joyce Carol Oates, there's a lot of names I don't really recognize as well, Gene Wolfe, Theodore Sturgeon, it's an awesome collection, don't see this too often either, so yeah, I've taken a little too much time just looking at two books, this should be going a little quicker, and we got another Horse Clans book, Robert Adams, The Savage Mountains, book number five in the series, this is one that the, the cover didn't stick out, I mean the cover didn't look too familiar to me, as I've been collecting the full series of these, but it turns out this is one I already have. Doesn't matter though, because this is one I would have picked it up anyways. There are several more that I'll be picking up on my next trip back to work, and I will be showing those in the next video, most likely. We got Ray Bradbury's Silver Locust, which I hadn't, I don't think I'd heard of before. Um, so let's check out to see, and the Really cool cover art as well. Check that out. Really interesting. Nice, pretty nice condition. I'm not sure if it's an anthology of short stories, which a lot of Ray Bradbury books tend to be, which is fine. And, oh, um, 
I know. I, I guess not. I think this is one story, as you can see. <clears throat> There's a time chronology on the side right there. I think indicating which you don't see that too often. So that's interesting. Though these are they the if those are chapter titles, which I'm not a hundred percent sure they are. They are titled almost in the. They almost sound like books themselves or stories themselves. So I'll find out more about that later. Uh, I got F. Paul Wilson, An Enemy of the State. I've come across this before. I think I've had a copy of this. I think I might still have a copy of this. I always grab the F. Paul Wilson books. This one's not in the greatest shape, but a really cool find. Um, everything we've seen so far is $1, including Werner Vinge. Don't ever find him in the bookstore. So this was a really, really awesome pickup right here in fairly nice condition as well. I think this is part of one of his series that he wrote. So there might be other books to go along with this one, The Peace War, either way. And now we come to a stack of Philip K. Dick books. Yes, I found this many of them. Really cool. Someone came in with their fantasy and sci-fi collection. They had a ton of cool stuff, and it was somebody who came in with their dad's fantasy and sci-fi collection, who apparently had passed away recently, and he, they had a bunch of boxes of books, a lot of really cool stuff. The guy, whoever he was, had a really awesome collection, including a handful of Philip K. Dick books, which I got to pick. Get uh, Some of these were $2, some of these were $1, I can't remember exactly. Doesn't really matter too much though. This one was probably $1 based on the condition. Martian Time Slip. Which is a good book for sure, but not quite as good or nearly as good as The Man in the High Castle. I'm guessing this one was also $1, so awesome deals for these despite the condition. There's a lot of different editions of The Man in the High Castle. This is uh, one of the better paperback editions. You have Deuce Eerie, which is co-written with Philip K. Dick and Roger Zelazny, a book that apparently took a lot of time to finish based on the fact back in the 70s there was no internet or anything like that, so collaborating was a really difficult uh, process for these two finishing this book, I think. Um, I think Philip K. Dick asked Zelazny to help him with the book, and it took, like, literally years. This one's in pretty nice condition. This one might have been $2. Um, fairly common, though, so nothing worth t too much, but this one is definitely worth a little bit more than the others that we've seen this far. It's a really cool edition of Ubik. Most editions of Ubik, the paperback ones, are really cool and worth a bit more I think because uh, Ubik is a really really good and popular title as well this one was probably might have been one dollar I'm guessing two though I'm not sure and we got the simulacra which is a really good story by him this one's in fairly good shape this was probably two dollars so either way I'm getting great deals on these especially for Philip K. Dick novels and the Ganymede Takeover, another good title, another good story by Philip K. Dick. And this one was, I'm guessing, uh, might have been one or two. Uh, not sure. Let's call it two. Doesn't really matter. And we've also got a few titles by Michael Moorcock. Eternal Champion. Really cool edition that is in really nice shape. Um, I, You know, I think... Yeah, these were $2. My, one, a couple of them might have been $1. Um, let's see, The Warlord of the Air. It's a pretty nice shape as well. The Lord of the Spiders. So it might have, I think was $2. And this one, $1, obviously, for the uh, cover. Com being completely absent from the book. An alien heat, I think, which we I think we saw recently the other day in a hardcover that I found. We got paperback. Oh, the back cover looks pretty nice though, so this would be a good reading copy. And I have not 
read this title yet, or this, uh, it's, it's book one, I think, in the series of three books, or three or four. So that will be the reading copy that I used to read when I get to that series eventually. And luckily, as you can see, Michael Moorcock books are never that lengthy, so it won't take very long to get around to those and read those. I always add one to the rotation sometimes because they go so quickly. And we got parts one, two, and three of the Illuminatus trilogy, which we've seen here a few times before. But, despite, I mean, other than these being in really nice condition, as you can see, these are also legitimate first prints of the books, which is something you definitely want to look for in these titles that make them worth a whole lot more other than the condition. So you, that's more important for sure. So let's check out really quick. And if you want to take my word for it, that all of these books are first printings just like this one. Well, we could show it real quick. You can see that they're all published in different years. So 73, 75, first printing. That's what you want to look for right there. And part three, Leviathan. 19. Oh, this is a second printing, so good thing we checked. But still pretty awesome pickup though um, the part one probably being more a little more rare as far as the pr first printings go so we got a set of three two first prints and one second print super awesome pickups so these are worth a lot more than you might realize just go look up and check it out but keep in mind that they're different editions i think the covers even look a little bit different as well and we got another nyrb classic a real thick one here a Savage War of Peace, Algeria, 1954 through 1962. Alistair Horn. No, not really cover art, more of a big picture. Mashup there of some. No, no, I think that's just one picture. Anyways, not too familiar with what this is about, but I always grab all the NYRB classics. And this one being only a dollar. Oh, these were only one dollar each as well, so amazing deals on those but only one dollar for this as well which is awesome i'm not sure why it wasn't wasn't you know, two dollars or any more oh there's something right there so that indicates that i think that there is possibly underlining of some sort let's see um, there we go yeah so that kept it from being sold in the store. Just that right there. So, you, you know, you flip through. Oh, there's a lot more writing within. But that's okay. For $1, you know, this is the kind of book that is used for that kind of thing anyways. Because this is obviously nonfiction. No big deal, though. Great deal for one buck. And we got a few hardcovers of some sci-fi authors, including Harry Harrison. of the St um, One of the books of the Stainless Steel Rat series. The Stainless Steel Rat Wants You. <laughs> really cool picture right there. There's the Stainless Steel Rat. Book is in pretty nice condition though overall. It's a book club edition. Cool pickup for one buck. Yeah, A.E. Van Boat's Slan, which is one of his more well-known books from what I know. And nice condition for this one as well. Another book club edition. And it's got one of these stickers. I think we've seen this same exact sticker before in some other books. I wonder if it's from the same person, maybe? Not quite. Not 100% sure. But still, for $1, awesome deal, especially for that author. And another really good science fiction author, from what I've heard, Jack Vance, Mask, uh, There. I know. Okay. Not, I haven't heard of this title before. And... Hey, I got it for one dollar. Apparently, somebody else got it for one dollar at one point. A book club edition, pretty fair condition overall. And last, we got Millennium, John Varley. This is actually a hardcover of John Varley's that I have not come across before. I think uh, I usually come across a lot of his hardcovers for whatever reason. Not exactly sure if there's a lot printed or not, but now I got this one. It's a book club edition pretty nice. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Sorry this video took probably a little bit longer than it usually did. 
first two books I think took four minutes to look through. Anyways, yeah, um, appropriately though, because yeah, we are in the Halloween season. If you are also in the uh, mindset of reading some scarier titles this uh, October, come join me. I'll be doing that. Be trying to read about three or four titles this month in that genre. So let me know what you're reading. Be interested. Give me your suggestions. I have two or three more books that I haven't chosen for this month. So feel free to leave me your suggestions. And I often read what, uh, what other people suggest. And I'm usually, almost all the time, um, satisfied with uh, the suggestions after reading. So I will most likely read something if you highly recommend something but you got to give me a good reason too you can't just say hey read this book because yeah i gotta have better reason than that anyways leave your comments thank you for watching happy reading to you those about to read salute you